It is Monday, February 18th. It is supposed to be clear until about midnight tonight. It's not even that cold out. I'd say it's about minus five, minus, no more than minus 10. So uh, tonight it's also a full moon. So I'm going to be capturing something in Orion in H alpha. I'm going to be using a very portable lightweight rig tonight. And I realized in the last video, I said that uh, the gear I was putting together is uh, very portable and practical rig for deep sky. It's got the filter wheel and everything. I would love to use that tonight, but I honestly, I really don't think it's going to stay clear tonight. I'd be surprised if I get an hour of that. So I'm just going to set up on the deck here, something extremely portable. I wanted to try out anyway. So tonight I'm going to be using the Red Cat 51 on the Ioptron Skyguard Pro. be really cool to do something like uh, the cone nebula and Christmas tree cluster because those are objects I really haven't done justice in the past but I think tonight I gotta go for the sure thing and it's not the Orion nebula this time I'm thinking the rosette would be a great target for this little scope at 250 millimeters focal length so the red cap 51 is f 4.9 250 millimeter focal length and so it's very sharp and very wide. The rosette is quite large, so I can capture the rosette and uh, some of the uh, nebula extends past the rosette too. Maybe I can frame it up nicely like that. The rosette is a little easier to find and frame up on a mount like the Skyguider Pro than the uh, cone nebula. That might be a little bit difficult. It's pretty faint, especially with an H-alpha filter that I'm gonna be putting in here. And uh, speaking of H-alpha filters, so I've got the T3 DSLR attached here, and I'm actually gonna take advantage of the filter slot in the uh, Red Cat 51. So I'll take this uh, M48 adapter off of here, thread in an uh, Optolong 6.5 nanometer H-alpha filter, and then I'll take the, um, the L-Pro clip-in filter that I've got in here currently, I'll take that out. So the filter will be inside the scope and I won't need uh, a filter sitting in the camera body here. That's the plan. Oh, there's a surprise. Unexpected clouds. Not gonna freak out. Not gonna freak out. In case you're wondering how I've got the Skyguider mounted here, this is just an old tripod from my Celestron CG5 equatorial mount. And then this is the new uh, wedge from William Optics for the Skyguider and for the Sky Watcher Star Adventurer mount. So it's a new and improved design. Uh, it's a little more rigid, it's very solid, it uh, has a nice finish and uh, looks really nice obviously. It was, uh, this it was included with the package with the Red Cat that William sent me, so it looks pretty sweet. While I'm waiting for the uh, clouds to clear so I can at least do a polar alignment, I'll show you at least where uh, the Rosette Nebula is. So here's the constellation Orion right here. And the Rosette is right here, NGC 2246. And it's actually Caldwell 49. I can't remember if 2246 is the star cluster embedded within it, uh, but that's where it is anyway. East of Orion is uh, the Rosette Nebula. So it's cleared up just enough for me to do my polar alignment on the sky guider. I'll use my polar finder app on my phone, see where Polaris should be tonight and quickly make the adjustments on the mount. Like I said, this new wedge from William Optics is really solid and it makes making uh, adjustments like that easy. And I can lock it into place really securely. Big improvement over the original. You've 
probably heard me go on and on about how I think wide field apochromatic refractors are the way to go for a beginner. Case in point, I'm lining up uh, through an H-alpha filter in a DSLR, the Rosette Nebula, test exposures just to see it. I put the scope in the general vicinity of the area because it's halfway between Procyon and Betelgeuse and down a bit. So I aim the scope there roughly. First try, Rosette Nebula, there it is in the corner of the frame. It's so much easier to frame up targets, especially when you're shooting with these harsh filters. A wide field scope is so forgiving. As soon as you get in those long focal lengths, you get lost in space and then you're dealing with tracking accuracy and plate solving and everything. A wide field scope is, in the early stages, so important to have that good experience because you're already dealing with learning how to stack subs and the processing software and all that. Give you do yourself a favor and use a wide field refractor that's portable and compact and easy to use and provides a good fun user experience at least early on then you can progress from there and get a big old scope here's a little tip for you if you're new to narrow band imaging especially with the DSLR so this filter is a uh, 6.5 nanometer which is a very very narrow band of light so I'm pointed at the star uh, Pro Scion right now and I'm just doing a test exposure with the DSLR and the Batonoff mask attached and you'll see the star pattern is right there so let's just review that again and I think I'm pretty darn close to being uh, in perfect focus with this with this scope right now there you go so that's what you want to see for the star pattern but uh, with this with this H alpha filter it is dark man like you you point it at a star and you, you see nothing through the live view. You need to aim it at something very bright and do a test exposure. This exposure is 13 seconds before you even see anything because it's a very narrow band of light. So what I did to pre-focus it, it's the one benefit of having a full moon. I used the moon to, uh, to get a, a real rough focus before I uh, put it on a star. And then I went back there. So that's just a little tip if you're using a DSLR with an H-alpha filter. I realize that setting up on the deck isn't the greatest for stability. I mean, there's a little bit of shake there, so that can be seen in the images, which means that while the camera's running and the tracker's going, I can't let Rudy out to walk around there and shake the boards and I can't go out there. So I think if I leave it running and no one steps on the deck, it should be fine. It's a very solid new deck, but obviously if I was working on a really serious project, I'd want to set up in the grass and not on something where there's possible vibrations. So. The test images I'm looking at look great. They're four minute subs at ISO 1600. It's nice and cold out there. It's like minus 12, I think, with the wind chill. So uh, the sensor is staying cooler than uh, it certainly could be. And uh, yeah, the images look great. I got the rosette centered right in the frame there. So uh, I can't wait to share the final image at the end of this video. It's gonna be the rosette nebula in H alpha captured through the RedCat 51 uh, Canon T3i DSLR camera using 4-minute subs at ISO 1600.